welcome all today we are going to talk about battery thermal management system we'll talk about some basic things then we'll move towards more advanced things going forward this is the content for today we'll talk about it one by one so different kind of layouts which is available for the battery thermal management system very very much popular one of them is cylindrical cell cooling which tesla is using nowadays for their cylindrical cells apart from the other omians are most majorly preferring pouch or prismatic cell cooling we'll talk about that in detail so this is a typical battery circuit layout if you see these are the blue color modules below which there are some kind of interface material which enhances the heat transfer and below which there is a cooling plate if you see a cell in detail there is a cell module right below which there is a thermal pads below which there is a cooling channel for aluminum which has some cooling channels so what is this thermal interface material and how it works let's talk about this you might have seen this kind of material in your cpu application most of the time so there is a cpu which transfers the heat the, to the heat sink in our case it's a battery plates if you see the conductivity of the metals in this case aluminum or or copper they have more than 200 watt per meter kelvin as a conductivity but when these two surface come in contact there is an air between them reason being because there are cert certain level of irregularities on the surface of metals right they are not completely flat so what happens major amount of contact area is filled with the air gaps which creates a problem to eliminate this there's something called thermal interface material <coughs> which is filled inside that and which enhances the thermal heat transfer so the thermal heat transfer conductivity for these materials is from 0.5 to 6 6 being maximum available in the industrial application so if it takes a small area for the consideration if you perform a small calculation considering there some resistance in valor and consider one percent contact area you will calculate this and you will find that the total resistance for this particular area, small area is around 4.9 thermal resistance. Whereas if the application of heat sink, uh, application of thermal interface metal is there, this total resistance of heat comes down to 1.7. This is 66% reduction is heat transfer resistance and the heat transfer will increase by three times. So what are different kind of interface metal available in the market? Let's talk about them. You might have seen this kind of paste which they apply on the top of CPU before attaching to the heat sink. So that is called kind of thermal grease which is made of silicon or hydrocarbon oils which is made with a conductive ceramic or metal particles. They flow very easily and fill the irregularities and the gaps. Second most popular uh, uh, thermal interface metal is gap filler pads which is made of silicon elastomers which deform easily under compression to fill the air gaps they also absorb some kind of vibrations which are arising in the system next thing is thermal paste th thermal tapes they provide some kind of adhesion force between the two joining surfaces and they don't they don't allow the movement of this two uh, 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 surface along with each other so let's understand the battery cooling plates and their flow mechanism. So there is a battery module. If you see from the top below which there is a battery cooling plate. If you see in detail, there are some flow channels in that. For this case, let's consider simple geometries for our understanding. Let's consider 10 LPM is flowing inside the system. And this is dividing 5 LPM on either side, right? Then this single battery cooling plate is further divided in 5 channels. So each channel has 1 LPM of flow. Right, and again, this is getting heated up by the cells, and the hot at fluid is coming out of system. Let's take a cross section of this area, and same thing you will see there's a module below which there are thermal plate, thermal paste, or parts below which there's a cooling channels in cooling tubes or the cooling plates. Right, let's see in more detail. So, the heat is coming from there to the paste, paste is transferring heat to the cooling channels via the aluminum plate. So this becomes a series of the events, right? And if you see, these are the conductivity of the elements. If you see the conductivity of thermal paste is quite less compared to the, the nearby component, which is copper or aluminum. So this may cause the hindrance in the heat transfer, right? This is what, what we think. 
let's understand in more detail by some thermal analysis. So if we make a heat equivalent heat circuit diagram, heat resistance diagram for this one, you understand that the thermal paste is there, then the electrum aluminum plate is there, which is causing the resistance. Apart from that, there is a convective heat transfer resistance from the coolant side also because it has to take away the heat. So these are the equations like uh, the conductivity, uh, conductive heat transfer resistance is defined by L by K and the convective heat transfer resistance is defined by 1 by HA. Let's calculate them. So for this consideration, let's consider one channel has a cross section of 5 mm by 25 mm in our case, right? And see a 3D geometric representation of this. Let's consider 150 is the width of that summary section. And we have a thermal paste of 3 mm thickness, below which there is a 1.5 mm aluminum plate, which is thick, below which there are some cooling plates. For simplicity, we are taking a 1 meter depth of the system. Right? Let's calculate the hydraulic diameter of the system, post which we are saying that in one section there is a 1 LPM flow. We calculate the flow rate. Similarly, we'll calculate the velocity in that channel. Then we consider for this simple case, water as a coolant and we calculate the Reynolds number. We find that Reynolds number is coming around 1212, which is in, you might be knowing that this is laminar flow because the heat transfer, Reynolds number is less than 2000, right? So we know in for this case, when the Reynolds number is less than 2000 being a laminar flow, Nusselt number does not depend on for does not depend on Reynolds number for laminar flow in case of rectangular ducts. So, but it follows a pattern with respect to the aspect ratio. So, for a single channel, if you see, has an aspect ratio of 0.2. For from this graph, we can see if corresponding to point to Nusselt number comes out to be 5.5. From this Nusselt number, if you calculate the heat transfer coefficient, it comes out 397, right? From this basic equation, you can pause and see the calculations. Let's understand this. If you make the equivalent heat resistance diagram and calculate the resistance for each virtual thing, paste, plate, and for the convective thing, we find based on this simple calculations that this is the equivalent heat resistance which is coming from the system. So 3.3 a conductive resistance of the paste, below which 0 0.05 for the plate and 20 kilo per Kelvin per kilowatt for the complete convective heat transfer, overall convective heat transfer coefficients. But understand that in further detail. So if you say this, the total heat transfer resistance is 23.35. Out of it, 14% is only going for thermal paste. And 0.2% is going for the aluminum. Remaining 85% is given by the coolant side alone. So what we thought earlier, the conductivity may cause the hindrance. It's not because of the thermal conductivity of paste. It's from the coolant side itself, huge amount of resistance is coming, which causes the heat transfer resistance. So what are the other uh, functions of thermal heat transfer material, right? Thermal interface material, because 14% is not small number, but still we use it. Let's understand in detail. The, what are the different functions of that? Since thermal interface material are used in close contact with the electrical component like batteries, they must have high dielectric strength. And apart from that, they should have high thermal retardation so that in case of thermal runaways, they protect the complete system. So generally this thermal interface metal is specified by their thermal conductivity, impedance and electrical resistance. The th soft thermal pad deform very easily under compression. Right to fill the air, gas, and irregularities. So they help in absorbing the shocks and vibration also of the system. This is very useful in case of automotive applications where there are continuous some vibration coming in the system, right? And this kind of uh, sturdy characteristics combined with the thermal conductivity and dielectric strength ensures that the battery pack lasts for a very long period of time. If you see there are two kinds of, uh, two grades of thermal parts. One is electrical, uh, acrylic type. Second one is silicon type. Silicon type has a high thermal conductivity as compared to the acrylic type. And there are some pros and cons of using the both. You can read more about them in the uh, mentioned links. Now, we know that the major uh, 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 resistance is coming from the floor side. Let's play with the circuit a bit. Instead of five channel, let's make a single channel. So all the 
five LPM, which was getting divided in uh, uh, five channels, we are keeping a single channel, all the five LPM going through a single channel. So what will happen because of that? So the velocity in that particular section will increase. Again, we calculate the Reynolds number. Now the Reynolds number will be, will be five times higher because velocity has increased, which is 6060 now. Now this is not a laminar flow anymore. So Nusselt number will not depend, will not be a constant value. It will depend on the velocity, right? And there's an equation for that. If we use this equation and considering water as a coolant, we get a Nusselt number of 37. Now this is a quite high number, which is six to seven times higher than the previous calculation. Put this number, you get a heat transfer coefficient of 2,675, quite high number, right? So the convective heat transfer resistance now is 3.7. Now let's compare with the previous case. Earlier, this was a circuit diagram for us. Now it become 3.7 as a convective heat transfer resistance. Earlier it was 20, drastic reduction in that. Now, if you see this thermal phase conductivity resistance and this uh, convective side resistance are more of a less same, right? So now thermal pads will cause more resistance to the flow. But can we use this circuit? The answer is no. Why? Because there'll be high pressure on the system because complete flow, high velocity flow is flowing through a narrow section. So the pressure will be very high. Apart from that, there'll be high uniform, non-uniform temperature since big, because in the beginning, the temperature at this section will be very cold, but at the end, it will be very hot, right? So it will be very cold in this region and this will be very hot in this region. So there'll be very non-uniform, the temperature gradient will be very high, which we don't want for battery applications, right? So we cannot directly use this. So other people also try to use this. If you see the, uh, some academic research happened on that, there is a single inlet, the flu was circulating inside, then it came outside, right? But it's not so easy design for a bigger battery pixels. If you see this industrial solution by Modin, what they did it, they created some turbine generator inside the battery plates. So again, the battery cooling channels are same, but there are some turbine generator. What it will do, it will generate turbulence in the system. So again, the heat transfer coefficient will go high. The heat transfer will be better. And you don't create the pressure drop by creating the multiple loops in our system. Similarly, if you say for Dana, Dana, they have tried to maintain more uniform temperature from the battery plate. From this section, you see that for this section, this section, and this section, and the last section, all this have the same inlet temperatures, right? So from vertically, there'll be high temperature uniformity. People are doing quite good research in this area. Many students are doing it. If you see, they have tried to analyze based on CFT, different, different battery geometries. What is the implication? What are the impact of different geometries on the heat exchange? One of the best solution which is available in the market I'll not say best, but one of the good solution which is available in the market from value for the battery cooling plates. If you see, they have combined the best of both what this becomes the inlet. Now, if you see, they now they could have divided in five, six channels, just like that parallel channels, but they have divided only in two channels, one and two. And again, that single channel is circulating around like this. What will do? It will increase the velocity inside the channel. If they would have made six channels similarly parallel, the heat transfer coefficient have become very less, right? So they have used geometries, optimizing techniques that arrive on this condition. Now, the previous uh, configuration we talked about parallel sequence, that is more or less used in Hyundai Kona vehicle, old uh, the Kona vehicles. They have used similar uh, vertical uh, uh, cooling plates that coolant comes inside, again divided in five channels and goes up system. But if you see the new Ionic, they have advanced the cooling plate design. So if you see, this is a previous cooling plate design. On top of it, there is a thermal interface material. But if you see this new design, the cooling plate channels are quite different, right? They have further been optimized. So that is the power of optimization. Still, no one has perfected this. Everyone is trying to make it better and better. So this is still the work is happening in this area and quite a good research is required, right? What's the, what about a cylindrical cell? The same methodology what we used, like for calculating, same can be used over here. So there is a width of this cooling plate. There is a depth of this. You can calculate what is the Reynolds number inside, inside this, and you can calculate what is the heat transfer, right? But generally, 
this analytical equations are good for basic understanding. You should know that thing. But for a deeper optimization, the 3D software geometry, like 3D tools like CFD, NCM, and Fluence are used to optimize these kind of uh, cooling plate designs to have a more better uniformity of temperatures. What's next? For students, I would recommend to break down any system you observe in basic equation and analyze by first principle. Gut feeling may not always be right. You need to go understand in deeper way. Create new design of battery cooling plates. Find new thermal paste material. Go creative. Still, the development needs to be happen on this area. Learn more tools, CFD design optimization to try out different design exploration. But don't forget the basic principle. Otherwise, it will be garbage in, garbage out for the softwares, right? Go by the first principle approach. For engineer, please share your knowledge with other people. It will help other people to grow and you will get some constructive feedback from people, right? And stay updated on the advancement of technology. This is all from my side. Thank you for watching this video. Thanks a lot.